Hello, my name is Bogdana Nyamtsu and this is module number 4, Social Sustainability. The topic we are addressing in this course has to do with sustainability reporting in public and private organizations. During the last class, we discussed about sustainability measurement. Sustainability reporting is a related topic. You will see in the next slides what's the connection. Please let me tell you a statement from a former mayor of New York, Michael Bloomberg, who said, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. I think that everybody thought he was right, and I'm sure he is, but what if you measure it, but you interpret the data differently? For example, in a 2012 report for the National Commission on Securities in the US, the lack of water was assessed by two companies producing soft drinks differently. Only one company considered that the lack of water is a risk for the business. The other one did not say anything about this. So, what is sustainability reporting and why it's important? A basic definition includes under sustainability reporting a report about an organization environmental and social performance. It also includes the organization values and governance model and it demonstrates the link between its strategy and its commitment to a sustainable global economy. A more complex definition would describe sustainability reporting as the practice of measuring, disclosure, disclosing and being accountable to internal and external stakeholders for organizational performance against specific environmental, social and economic governance goals and metrics. Of course, it is important to reflect a little bit upon the reasons why companies and public organizations should engage in sustainability reporting. I would distinguish between internal and external motivations. Internal motivation have to do with the desire of the organization, be it private or public, to gain better information, to improve risk management, to improve performance, save resources and money, and not, and not uh, the last, improve staff satisfaction. Some of the external motivations may include improve stakeholders' communication, improve accountability and transparency, create a positive and trustworthy image, and especially in the public sector, build, build trust among public institutions and their constituencies. does sustainability reporting? In other words, are all organizations equally involved in this process or are there certain types of organizations more prone to do it? Sustainability reporting is rapidly gaining adoption across all market sectors globally. It is definitely the norm among large companies globally driven mainly by global investment community demand. However, it's gaining popularity among public sector agencies, but, mo but more slowly. Only approximately 2% of public agencies worldwide do it. It is not clear what is meant by public agencies, because in 2015 there were over 8,000 organizations and almost 30,000 reports. Very importantly is to understand whether sustainability reporting, similar to other 
sustainable development strategies is done voluntarily or not. For the most part, yes, sustainability reporting is done on a voluntarily basis. However, more and more countries have policies on mandatory reporting on non-financial factors, including the social one. If you examine carefully the map included on the slide, you will see which geographical areas have more policies on mandatory reporting. In the European Union, the, the road toward mandatory reporting was opened with the December 2014 Directive on non-financial disclosure to the market. Large multinational public companies with more than 500 employees were targeted by this regulation. They will report on environmental, social and employee-related human rights, anti-corruption and bribery matters. They will also be required to describe their business model, outcomes and risks of the policies of on the above topics and the diversity policy applied for management and su supervisory bodies. These companies are supposed to employ recognized frameworks such as GRE, Sustainability Reporting Guidelines, the United Nations Global Compact, OECD Guidelines or other organizations. Because sustainability reporting seems to be such an important strategy, it is important to understand who creates the standards used in this process. There are numerous organizations and frameworks. I would mainly want you to think or to remember two main organizations, the Global Reporting Initiative or GRE and the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, SASB. KPMG 2013 survey of corporate responsibility reporting stated that 78% of companies that issue sustainability reports worldwide refer to the GRE's guidelines. It is important to also know that GRE launched its first set of guidelines in 2000 and its most recent set called G4 in mid-2013. Please take a look at this slide and a couple of the next slides where you have some printouts taken directly from the latest set of guidelines adopted by GRE. It is important to see what these standards really measure. You can observe that we have the basic categories included under sustainable development with economic, environmental, and social. You can see that under the social categories, we have more categories such as labor practices and decent work, human rights, society, and product responsibility. This is how the standards look like. And this is the brief explanation provided for um, each standard in the manual issued by um, GRE. We have on this slide direct economic value generated and distributed. On this slide, we have total weight of waste by type and disposal method. This belongs to the environmental dimension, the first one belongs to the economic dimension. This one refers to communi communication and training on anti-corruption policies and procedure. This belongs to the social dimension. Please take a quick look and read the explanation pertaining uh, to how to quantify whether or not this standard is met.
for the public sector and public organizations, the framework on what the standards measure is a little bit different. Of course, on this slide we are again referring to the GRE's perspective. At the first level, we have standards measuring organizational performance. These are relatively similar to standards that are used for any type of organization. At the second level, things get a little, a little bit more specific. We are measuring the impact of public policies and services. For example, if we are looking at CO2 emissions, per inhabitant as a result of restricting access of traffic to the city. At the third level, which is also the broadest, we have the impact of all stakeholders. At this level, we are, if we are still referring to CO2 emissions, we are looking at these emissions in the community per inhabitant. There is quite a little bit of debate on whether or not public organizations should engage in sustainability reporting. As you could observe from the previous slide, this has to do with the fact that the entire process is a little bit more complicated, more complex and cumbersome than in the case of business organizations. Arguments in favor sustainability reporting in the public sector touch upon a variety of reasons. We are going to explore some of them in detail. The approach also depends on what public organizations we are considering. It is more easy to measure the impact of a public company than of an entire public administration. For example, Teresa Fogelberg Deputy Chief Executive of GRE said cities should report on their own impact as a, as a way of encouraging businesses to do so as well. Also, a commitment to sustainability reporting is a vital step towards creating vibrant cities. Other arguments can include the fact that reporting can open up dialogue with stakeholders and demonstrates leadership and accountability. The availability of sustainability information can be used to support internal decision-making processes, leading to efficiency improvements and cost reduction in the delivery of city services. The process is becoming less complicated because now there are specific standards available for cities which makes the process easier, as I mentioned uh, before. It is interesting that a lot of people consider that the real value of sustainability reporting is not the report itself, the document you generate at the end of the process, but, ra but rather the process itself, the process of preparing the report. There are numerous cities worldwide engaged in sustainability reporting, Amsterdam, Chicago, Dublin, and Warsaw are just a couple of examples. Because we are talking about cities and public organizations, I would like to mention to you that a new standard is now available for sustainable development in communities. It's an ISO standard 37120 and it's called Indicators for City Services and Quality of Life. You have to understand that the f this is the first ISO standard created for city metrics and it is highly important. It provides a comprehensive set of indicators and a methodology that will enable any size city in a developed or a developing economy to measure its social, economic and environmental performance in relation to other cities. Uh, part of this uh, new ISO metric, a set of 100 city indicators was developed, refined and agreed by cities globally. 
It includes 46 core indicators which cities must report on. Please, please let me give you a few more information about this new metric. The organization who pretty much deals with this process is called the World Council on City Data, which aims to coordinate all efforts on city data and the development of future international standards geared towards cities. Initially, there were 20 cities which had already started the reporting process for ESO 37120, and very important, there is an online open data platform available under this organization. This slide enables you to see how this platform looks like. If you go online, as advised in the reference section, you can put the name of any of the cities that are reporting under this framework and you can see how they perform. It is very interesting to see that the platform allows you to do comparisons. The platform is extremely user-friendly and it's very graphically suggestive. It's very, very easy to compare and contrast how cities are performing. On this slide, for example, you can look at the area of health and you can see how our cities that we selected perform. Recreation is also included here. All of these are indicators that can be considered under the social dimension. As mentioned previously in other lectures that are part of this module, this platform mostly includes hard data. There are a couple of perception indicators, but their use is a little bit more limited. Of course, we have to ask ourselves, what are the challenges associated with sustainability reporting, not only in the public sector, but, but even more broadly? Sustainability reporting is expected to deliver not only user-friendly, but actionable information for citizens and visitors. You have to make sure that the process stays credible, constructive, apolitical, and sustained indefinitely past the tenure of any single office holder. There are extreme variations in legal and political competencies between cities, cities which limits their capacity to act on highly standardized indicators. There are also critiques, scholars and practitioners who do not fully believe in the usefulness of um, sustainability reporting. Among the most cited critiques, we will mention the fact that a good report does not automatically mean good social and environmental practices. There are still few reporting companies, especially among small and mid-sized businesses and public organizations. Even those organizations which report, there is low reporting quality. There are data problems, low readership, and not enough quantitative indicators. Please let me offer you a few concluding remarks. Sustainability reporting has already been available for the private sector for 50-20 years. It's important to mention that there are discussions about integrated reporting. Financial aspects are significant, 
but non-financial aspect, aspects are gaining importance. The public sector is, however, relatively new to sustainability reporting, and there are numerous challenges. It's more complex and holistic than in the case of company. In Romania and other Central and Eastern European countries, performance measurement in general is not implementing. Sustainability reporting is considered too complex, too data-driven, and only perceived for its communication value.